So my good friend Hindu Response who has a YouTube channel, uh, you can go and check it out. Uh, he has around 15,000 subscribers, so he has a lot of content and stuff. He has a couple of videos against Christianity and he has been countering Christian comments about Hindus and so on and so forth. Of course, uh, some of them are good, some of them are pretty cringe-worthy and uh, I wanted to actually interact with this content and he, he wants to too, right? So I was going through some, some of his videos and uh, I feel I just want to re respond to one of the videos uh, where he mentions about sin, the definition of sin as per Christianity and Hinduism. He mentions that being a Hindu is the same as being a sinner according to Christians or Christianity. I don't think there is any theological basis for such a claim. There is nothing in the Bible that says that being a Hindu makes you a sinner or being a non-Christian makes you a sinner and somehow being a Christian makes you a, a saint. I don't think uh, there is any direct reference for such a kind of a claim. Of course, we are justified. The Christ Christian is justified but not necessarily a non-sinner. He is still a sinner. So what is sin according to Christianity? According to Hindu response, he gives three definitions. One is those who break the law, Old Testament law. Second is not following the will of God. And third is a Jew going against Jew. So basically he is saying that this sin definition works only within the context of Jews and Christians and not beyond that. And he also makes an appeal to what I have already dealt with uh, in my conversation with Mijin Kali. That Jesus came only for the house of Israel and not for the Gentiles. That he rejected uh, preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. And you can check out those videos here. I have made two videos. Response to Maya Ram 1, Part 1 and Part 2, which I will be referring to again once more. So let's analyze what sin is according to the Bible first. I'm going to be making a lot of references to the Bible. I know it is going to be tedious, but I don't have any other options because the question is being asked about Christianity. So to prove my point, I need to refer to the Bible, even if you don't like the Bible. So referring to Matthew 7, 21 to 29, Hindu response seems to claim that Jesus Christ commanded us to follow the will of God and anyone who doesn't follow the will of God is a sinner. So what is the will of God? You need to check out a couple of verses for that. Coming to Matthew 18 verse 11, it says that uh, if a man owns a uh, hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. This is one of the will of God that none of us should perish. Of course, this is not a direct comparison of human beings to sheep, but it is a allegorical term. This is not degrading the human race, but anyway, like if you want to take it that way, fine, it's fine. Here God is saying that it is the will of the Father that no one should perish. None of us should perish. Is it the will of God that some of us should go to hell? He wants the Hindus to go to hell. Is it really so? Is that what the Bible says? So certainly not. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says, God is not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He wants repentance. That is the will of God. It is not that God wants to send some people to hell, whoever it may be. Whether he is a sinner or he is a saint or whoever it is, he doesn't want anyone to go to hell or to be condemned through eternity. He wants everyone to repent and turn to him. Ezekiel 33 11 says the same. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their wicked ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Of course, this, this particular verse is uh, referencing to the Israelites. And I understand this is from the Old Testament. It is to the Israelites. But you see the point, right? God is not wanting anyone to perish. God is not wanting evil to occur to anyone. God of the Bible is not some evil saddest who wants to torture people. He doesn't want, he doesn't desire, he doesn't will that people should go to hell. And of course, this is a famous verse. John chapter 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So Hindu response has been appealing to Matthew 7.21 which says that not everyone who is calling upon the Lord is going to be saved but those who follow the will of God. So what is the will of God? For that we need to refer John chapter 6.40. It says, This is the will of God that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life. You see that point? One of the will of God is that you should actually follow the one that he has sent. So believing Jesus Christ is part of the will of God. It is not actually following the law necessarily but it is actually following Jesus Christ and believing him to be the God or Savior sent for us. That is what is part of the will of God. So the second question that arises is that does the law apply only to the Jews and Christians? Is that what the whole claim of the Bible is? Certainly not. I will tell you why. Because these laws were not simply created arbitrarily. It was not simply put out as a set of rules and regulations. These laws of the whole testament reflect the nature of God. When God says you shall love your neighbor as you yourself, he is saying that because that is what he himself follows. 
when he says you shall not covet he himself doesn't covet when he says that you shall not murder he himself does not murder in the same way when he says that you have to be faithful you have to be loving you have to be kind you have to be righteous and so on and so forth what he really means is that he is really reflecting upon his own nature it is not arbitrary but the laws of the bible merely reflect the nature of god so these are not something that came into place all of a sudden in a particular point of time like when he gave it to moses that is when it arose you know it, it has already existed it was always there and it is universal these laws are universal stuff like golden rule altruism these are all universal laws it has it, it reflects the nature of god himself so what does the bible say about non christians who do not keep the law let's refer to romans 2 verses 14 to 15 indeed when the gentiles non christians who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law they are a law for themselves even though they do not have the law they do not have the old testament 10 commandments and all that they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts sometimes accusing them or at times even defending them haven't you felt something wrong when you when you spoke a lie or when you hurt someone or when you when you cheated in your exam or something like that haven't you felt that that conscious uh, difficulty in your in yourself this is what the verse is talking about your conscience is also something that will judge you to be right or wrong have you have you ever felt that if you have felt it then you have sinned that's that's the whole point of the bible of, of course this is not to really condemn anyone to to call someone as a sinner is not something derogatory it is it is simply stating the facts have you spoken a lie have you hurt other people have you felt jealous have you spoken badly have you gossiped i am sure uh, there is no human being who hasn't done at least one of it right and there is also another definition given by the bible for what sin is james 4:17 says if anyone then knows the good that they ought to do and doesn't do it it is a sin for them if you know that something has to be done you are walking on the road and you you see a stone or rock in the middle of the road you know that you should take it out and throw it away because some biker or someone will fall on it maybe you know that it is a right thing to do but you don't do it then it is sin this is again not to condemn and make you feel sad or bad about it but this is to recognize that we are sinners and we need somebody else not ourselves something from outside ourselves in this case we are appealing to the grace of god we need the forgiveness of god does it mean that being a sinner makes us somewhat less than a, a normal human being certainly not the bible says in genesis that we are created in the image of god there are so many verses in the bible which show how important human life is on is the image of god the book of genesis speaks about god creating us in his own image in his own nature we have the nature not the full nature of god but part of the nature of god we are certainly not one with god but certainly we have the nature of god we have the mark of god on us this is found throughout the bible and so many places second corinthians 5:21 says that i have been made righteous by god first corinthians 6:19-20 says that i am not my own i belong to god hebrews 2:11 says that i am one with god he is not ashamed to call me a brother i am a creation of god i have the mark of the holy spirit upon me there are, there are so many verses that show the importance of human life and human worth and we need to also see another verse which says romans 14:23 anything that is not from faith is sin so basically anything that is not from faith in god is sinful so this is a universal law it is not something applied only to the jews and christians it would apply to everyone besides the ones who are breaking the law who are breaking the laws in your conscience in your heart right maybe you don't accept those laws but nonetheless those laws are still present there our and our belief or disbelief in those laws doesn't change the nature of god it doesn't change the fact that we are breaking those laws and it doesn't simply apply only to the jews it certainly applies to everyone in all nations and all places but what is important to understand is that it was given to those people in two formats one is the ritual laws and ritual commandments and another is the moral laws and moral commandments so this is where a hindu response seems to be separating the two christians as jesus christ christianity and uh, pauline christianity probably the better word to be used is uh, jewish christians and hellenistic christians so one group wanted to follow the jewish laws and traditions rituals and the moral commandments of the old testament whereas paul or more to be more precise hellenistic christians wanted to merely follow the moral laws and commandments in the old testament and not to be held up with the rituals of the old testament that is where the conflict is the the short period of conflict that was existing between paul and the other apostles was not whether gentiles can become a christian or not that was completely solved peter had already spoken that gentiles can easily become christians and that was not an issue at all that was not at all debated in the history of christianity what was debated is should the old testament ritual should be followed or not when jesus christ came he himself said that i did not come to put an end to the law i came to fulfill the law so he fulfilled the ritualistic 
moral requirements of the old testament is completely filled up and finish the old testament all together it has been fulfilled once it has been fulfilled the contract has been over we need to move on so the moral laws which reflect the nature of god still exist but the rituals like animal sacrifice uh, dress code and all that doesn't apply to the new testament believer hindu rasmus also quotes mark 4:12 as saying that uh, god doesn't want the gentiles to hear his word and be converted uh, unfortunately i don't think that is a context of the verse he is talking about within the context of his rights he is talking about within the jews some will hear you and understand you some will not understand you don't worry about those who don't want to follow you he is, he is emphasizing about within the context of israel he is not even talking about the gentiles here so basically did jesus think that everyone was a sinner certainly he did he felt that everyone certainly was a sinner was he preaching to the gentiles when he was alive no not at all because his ministry at that time was only to israel this is like asking a person at 12 noon in the day would you like to have dinner and he is going to say no 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 i don't want dinner i just want lunch i'm going to only eat lunch i don't want dinner it doesn't mean that the person never had any dinner or doesn't want any dinner but at that moment he doesn't want to be bothered about dinner he wants to have lunch so during the life of jesus christ he was living in the old testament and he wanted to preach only to the israelites this is a huge topic and i understand but the new testament technically starts only with the resurrection of jesus christ and only then he reveals uh, that the gospel should be preached to all the nations to all the people there are so many verses i already quoted this in the videos please listen to it and the also also hindu response seems to claim that the verses which mention about all nations and ethnos denotes the tribes of israel i re- i would really like to know where he gets that information from because i as i already explained in my video the term ethnos which i directly reference to from greek dictionary shows that in most of the cases in the bible it was always used to denote all nations all tribes every nation every language all over the world that is how it has always been i'll just end my video with one more reference to the same verse that i referred before john 316 says the word used here for world God for God so loved the world this word in greek is kosmos which literally means the whole world in literally every situation that, that this word was used it meant the whole world i don't see why i need to give more reference than this to show that uh, god really cared for the whole world and calling someone a sinner is really not derogatory i, I know some people get very upset when they called us a sinner but you know you need to diagnose a problem before you can actually look for solutions we have all fallen short of the grace of god we have all committed sins in the past and god is gracious enough to forgive our sins if we confess our sins and repent i don't think this is something unique to a particular religion or something this applies to every single religion you know even the hindus believe that for moksha for attaining certain degree of uh, oneness with god with brahman you need the grace of god it's the same with us we need the grace of god for our deliverance i don't see anything theologically different in that aspect